Woo! Let's see. Uh, roll call. Can you hear and see me? Everybody over there in Discord land. And over here in Got Audio Got Video. Wow! Okay. Well, that was interesting. Sorry about that, everyone. I completely blew up my uh, computer, and when I restarted, Wirecast, which is what I used to broadcast, had corrupted the, uh, the file that has the layout of all the cameras and things. So I quickly was able to force it to not open that file by hiding it. Uh, let's see. Let's check the cameras. So that's the good. That's the workshop without the overhead. I'll leave that one alone. This is me and you. Hi. Um, workshop. Yeah, let's, I think this is enough to go on. So let's switch over to this camera. Oh, you know, what? I'm going to do one thing here just because why not? I'm going to add a camera to this shot that is a do, 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 camera capture to video. Put it off to the corner. And good. All right. Hey, thanks for putting up with me, everyone. I don't know what this will do to the video. We might end up, when it archives it, with a couple of videos. I'm not sure if Facebook is still streaming, so I'm just going to try to check that real quick. Is that this? No, that's YouTube. Well, I don't know where that one went. There it is. Let's reload that page. It may have just printed or run nothingness for a while there. Let's see. Uh, yeah, it's still streaming too. Okay. Cool. Thanks for putting up with that. All right, so let me head back over here. And in our waning moments of the stream, we're a little bit over. Uh, what I'm going to do is just pop this camera in a bit closer and show you. Here's my idea for the enclosure. Uh, I 3D printed very quickly a little um, case lid and I still haven't peeled off all the little um, support material or brim material there. But if you, if you look at, let's see if I can get a good angle there. Okay, so you look at, I've got a little lip here that is meant to fit into a little lip I put in the edge there, and I didn't make enough room for that. So it'll, it'll snap into here, but it kind of torques the um, base a little bit when I, when I put it in, because I printed these fast, so they're pretty thin. So you can see that went in nicely, but now look at the bottom is kind of warped, and it doesn't, even when it fits all the way around, the whole thing has a funny little camber to it. So. Uh, Snap fit. I've not I've not designed nice snap fit stuff like the Ruiz brothers have. So, um, oh look, I'm covering my entire face with that picture in picture. I'm going to fix that for a second so that so that we can relate. You know, the eyes. They're the window to the soul. Man, right, let me move this over and crop the left side, right side. Move it over. Push that. Okay. Looks like it screwed up my color correction, too. I've got a couple of color corrects on those. To... All right, hi. Uh, so, but the idea behind this is that we have a keypad, and I just made a little sort of cutout for that there. And again, this was a, a rough, and, rough and ready one, so I measured that with calipers, 3D modeled it, printed it, did not... Uh, include any kind of retention clips or uh, holes. So there's four holes on here that I should um, mark and measure so that we can, you can see the, the uh, keypad has a nice little uh, mounting holes there. So that's, that's how that should be mounted on there, but I'm just going to do this as like kind of a proof of concept for you here. Um, I don't have a convenient way to put power into there either right now. I didn't put any holes into this, so uh, I'm just going to unceremoniously tape that into place there. 
But that's, you know, this could be done in cardboard, of course, or wood like I did with the cigar box last week. Um, this one's a fairly rough 3D print as a concept, which then could be refined. Uh, let's recess these back a little bit. And set this into here. Okay, so pretending that was all tucked away neatly. All right, let's zoom in. There we go. So now we have our little button box that doesn't do anything, but sure looks fun. Uh, I know, whoops, I just popped the, I forgot to put tape behind the keypad. All right, let's fix that a little bit. So it doesn't win jankiest prototype of the year award. Comes in second, solid second place. So our good friend Gaffer's tape, don't hate. There we go. So that gets the idea across, and uh, hopefully I can press these without breaking it. So I hope you liked that today, uh, minus the breakdown, but I'm very excited to have the higher quality camera. Hopefully that's not what broke everything with the broadcast earlier. My computer might have said, hey, I can't handle all this data. Um, it's an older computer. But it's, it's performing admirably, and I'm excited to have a clearer picture for you now uh, of what's going on on the bench top. And I've got a couple more things in the works to, to up the, the ante on close-ups as well, so stay tuned for that. Um, and I think the last thing I'll do is I'll leave you with, since I've been talking about the camera, I'm going to just head over here, and I think I'll just scrub through a movie uh, for you of the uh, camera setup as I put it together, and then I can point, point my camera up at the up at the rig that I have there uh, currently. So let's see, let's head to, head to this view, hello. And let's pull up, I'm just gonna pull up QuickTime. Uh, I won't play this with audio, I, I will narrate as I show you, but that was me earlier just doing a quick impromptu um, Unboxing, so there's the A6000 camera. Uh, that is the lens, that is the AC adapter so I don't have to run off a battery, and that is the USB HDMI converter. There is a uh, Magic Arm support. I'm actually using that one down on the bench for some stuff, and I have an existing one that I already put up above. I'll show you in a second. So camera body, and there's the lens on the camera body there. I put the little lens hood on so that I can um, avoid glare from lights. Sofa Kirby said the product page has a good drawing of the keypad he used for Project Once. I did too, yeah. There's a, if you go to the keypad um, project page on Adafruit, there's a really nice um, technical drawing of the keypad that you can use for um, designing your enclosure. So if you get it scaled right, you can make the same chamfers in the corners and stuff. That's how I made the whole in my case, uh, and should have followed it to make the drill holes for the screws as well. Uh, AC adapter, and then I'm going to set it on the arm down below. You can see how this works here. So there's a base clamp that I'm just clamping to the bench uh, called a super clamp, and there's the magic arm with a camera bracket on it. Uh, so you can see there, you just tighten that. Uh, single friction lock and it locks the three joints, which is pretty helpful. I had one loose uh, connection to the super clamp down below. Um, so that's what the camera looks like there using some of these little orange ties. So let me show you now. I'm gonna switch, um, switch views and let's do just a straight workshop camera. Okay, so here is, I'm gonna move this camera here and try to, uh, whoa, oh, 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 I blew the HDMI, come on, wake up thing, 
this is a really finicky one. Sorry about that. I'm going to turn that off and on. Yeah, I'm tempting fate. I know. I should leave well enough alone, but I can't. All right, turning the camera back on. You can do it, little camera. All right, so there you can see I'm going to delicately... Okay, stopping right there. So there you can see, right now I have this garage door. I'm going to get rid of this roll-up door eventually and do a, a swing open door because I'm losing a lot of space up above uh, with that stupid thing. And you can see that's why I have, instead of a straight clamp and pipe dropped uh, from the ceiling or from a beam, I have to use this uh, magic arm. Uh, it's a two-sectional magic arm with an extender to loop around where this uh, garage door rolls up because otherwise I can't get a straight down shot of the bench. So uh, that's, that's the uh, behind the scenes magic there. Let's see if I can move this camera without losing HDMI. I did it. Whew. All right, I'll put that back to there. So that's a planned upgrade is to, is to do regular doors on there. Um, but there we have the lovely overhead view. So I hope you uh, enjoyed all that. And I'll take uh, some questions, comments over in the uh, chat on Discord and YouTube, if anyone has them. Let's see. I need more slack in the HDMI connection. Yeah. By the way, HDMI, the cable I am running from up there is a 100 foot, is that right? I think that's a 100 foot, really nice quality HDMI cable that I got on Amazon probably for 35 bucks or 50 bucks or something at one point. I have a project that I've, uh, I've been threatening to build for years of putting some external cameras on my Jeep. Uh, when I, I have a Jeep Wrangler and I like to take it off-roading and so I want to have some cameras just for fun that look at uh, the view of the wheels so you can get up on rocks and stuff. Um, also don't have a backup camera in it, so I thought it might be fun to do a backup camera. So I bought a bunch of Raspberry Pi uh, uh, like accessories, HDMI cables and connectors and things and to run long runs of HDMI around uh, to, to various places. So uh, I haven't built that yet, but as a consequence, I do have uh, a bunch of uh, HDMI cable, so I'm using that one here. Uh, CG Rover asks, uh, I need to convert to monster cable. That would be quite expensive. Uh, Sekala asks, are the Neo segments fully modular? Are they individually addressable? Yes, so uh, they are in the, in the Neo segment. Let me uh, let's see if I can reopen the Arduino sketch here. Um, in this Neo segment, uh, code here, you'll see that that's the main command you use, either neo-segment, I can make this bigger, can I? I thought I could make, oh, no, I can't, not this way, uh, but that says the neo-segment uh, zero, and I have zero through five, so those are the six segments that I have on my display, uh, so you can talk to an individual segment, oh, sorry, uh, digit, I lied to you, so this, that would talk to the first digit. Um, so you can talk to each digit. You can also talk to each segment of each digit. So in this mode in set digit, you can talk to the first one and tell it what to display. If you do the set segment like I had on there a second ago, uh, then you can talk to uh, each digit and each individual line on them. So yes, they're individually addressable. Um, and that's because they are simply NeoPixels with a really nice library that wraps up talking to them. If you check out my Ninja Timer that I built, so this project video and learn guide on Adafruit for the, the large uh, LCD style, you know, seven segment style display I built, those are strips of NeoPixels behind each segment. And same sort of thing, I'm, I'm addressing individual digits and I'm addressing individual segments with a little bit of code I wrote that's really in the end just talking to a bunch of NeoPixels that are on, on strips. Um, let's see. Other questions? You could build a matrix of them for simple animations. Yeah, if you look at the demo um, videos, uh, I posted one yesterday that was just one of the demos running. You can do chases and circles and, uh, you know, you could 
plug this in and just run any NeoPixel animations and they would do something interesting. It's just the order is going to be sort of snaky uh, through them because at the end of the day, it's just one long series uh, uh, daisy chains together. Um, the diffusing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the diffusing on the NeoPixels um, is really important. So I looked inside of these um, seven segment Neo segments, and there's again some space between the, the LED, a little wall that separates neighbors from each other so the light doesn't uh, pollute neighboring segments when you're only trying to light one segment, and then uh, some nice diffusing material. Um, all right, well, I think we've taken up enough time today. I'm so sorry about the technical difficulties earlier, but I hope you enjoyed spending your time with me here in my workshop. I'm John Park for Adafruit Industries, and I will see you all next week. Bye-bye.